Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudo Buyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 19W34B of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. And in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Iron Golem spawning cells uh, for iron farms. Uh, this here is the classic design um, that's been used for a long period of time. Uh, uh, originally, this was designed by JL2579. Uh, and it's uh, stood up for a long period of time, although I have had some issues in it, uh, issues with it that I discussed in a previous video. Uh, and so I've been experimenting with a, a number of different designs for iron golem spawning cells. Uh, but in the end, I decided that um, I, I'm going to try to make this one work by fixing all of the issues that I had with it so that I can fix it, uh, it uh, I can fix the iron farm that I have in an existing world without uh, too many modifications. Uh, so you might uh, might be able to use the things that I, I'm describing here to, uh, uh, to tweak uh, these iron golem spawning cells in your own world. Um, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just begin talking about um, the problems that I've had with this uh, uh, one by one by one. Um, I'm going to start with the, uh, uh, the villager holding cells here. Uh, I've, there are a number of different problems with uh, villagers, uh, generally speaking. One of them is that they just glitch out of everything. They, they're, they're really, really glitchy. They phase into walls and suffocate, you know, just kind of randomly when chunks are reloaded or, or whatever. Uh, and uh, that's why all of this water is in these uh, villager cells, uh, to keep these villagers kind of bobbing up and down in the center of this, away from the walls, uh, kind of away from the floor. Uh, and this helps really a lot with the villager glitching. Um, if you have too many villagers in any one of these uh, holding areas, um, here there's only three in each, uh, but if you, if you have several, they can still push against each other and they can phase into the walls and, and uh, what have you. So uh, this isn't foolproof, it helps a lot. Uh, the only thing that I've really uh, found that works better than this uh, is to keep villagers trapped in minecarts. Uh, in that way, the villagers basically just don't move and uh, they never really seem to glitch out of minecarts. I've never had a villager uh, glitch out of a minecart before. So um, that's what I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna remove these villager holding cells and I'm gonna um, trap my villagers in minecarts. Uh, this is also going to help with another problem that I have with villagers, and, and that's um, their susceptibility to lightning in these cells here. Uh, if uh, lightning strikes uh, anywhere, um, anywhere along the top here, uh, or even uh, uh, inside here, inside these villager holding cells, um, uh, the villagers are going to take damage from the lightning, they're going to turn into witches, and of course they're all going to despawn. So, uh, not only do I want to trap the villagers in minecarts, I want to place those minecarts in, in a place where the villagers will be protected from lightning. So that's the, that's the first uh, modification that I'm going ma to make here. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've removed all of the villager holding areas. Uh, I've trapped all of my villagers in minecarts and I've embedded the minecarts within the wall of the structure itself. Uh, now, each of these minecarts is on a rail. It's a little bit hard to see here, um, but it's basically oriented with the wall itself. So this rail right here would need to be reoriented by placing another rail and then uh, destroying, the, uh, destroying the other rail. There we go. So uh, all of the minecarts are basically in line with the wall. That means they can't move anywhere and the villagers are stuck in the minecart, which means the villagers can't go anywhere either. Uh, and this really, um, uh, I've never had a problem with villagers glitching out this way. Um, this is really, really stable. Uh, plus, uh, the villagers are low enough here in the wall. Notice, um, so if uh, I go inside the farm here, or inside the cell, there we go. Uh, the villagers are just above the water level in here. So um, this means that they are deep enough within the cell uh, that they're completely protected from lightning. Uh, so <clears throat> if lightning were to strike along the top of the wall up here, it does damage three blocks down, so there's one, two, three. Uh, so it's not going to reach the villagers, and if it does damage uh, 
above the water level. It can't do damage in the water level itself. It does damage? Uh, it uh, strikes right here. Uh, then three down from here is one, two, three. It still is not going to reach the villagers. The villagers are protected right there. Uh, and so uh, embedded in the wall in this way, uh, the villagers are actually completely protected from lightning, uh, which means that you don't actually have to worry about um, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, them uh, spontaneously despawning uh, because they've turned into witches. And the other additional benefit that th removing the villager holding cells has is it makes this spawning cell much more stable uh, if it's not built within the spawn chunks. Uh, and this is a problem because when you leave a uh, an, uh, uh, when you leave an area and it gets unloaded, all of the villager data for those chunks uh, disappears. And then when you re-enter those chunks, the village is reconstituted. Now, if you had built one of these spawning cells outside the spawn chunks in uh, chunks that can be unloaded, uh, and say the chunk boundary is right here. Uh, as you approach the uh, approach the cell uh, from this direction, what will happen is all of the doors uh, in this ch in the chunks that first load, all these doors down here, uh, will be loaded in, and these villagers will recognize these doors as valid doors of the village. And for the brief period of time that it takes you to actually approach the cell. Uh, uh, those chunks uh, alone, those doors alone, constitute the village, which means the center of the village is, you know, right, at, right about here somewhere, uh, or maybe, maybe right here. Uh, and that, that is going to be a problem if you have these villager holding areas here, because the iron golems can spawn inside the villager holding areas on top of the, uh, on top of the edge of them, um, and so that um, uh, that's actually a real problem because when the when the golems spawn there, either they get stuck in the cells, or maybe they can even start walking around the top of the top of the iron golem spawning cell. That is going to shut off the the production of the cell. Um, no more iron golems will be spawning uh, anywhere in the cell. So uh, that takes care. Of, uh, embedding the villagers in the walls in minecarts actually takes care of a lot of different issues. Um, uh, okay, so now on to uh, a couple of things about the doors here. Um, this uh, spawning cell has eight doors on each side for a total of 32 doors, and that is really intentional. Um, I had made a comment in my previous video about uh, iron golem spawning cells uh, where 32 doors and 12 villagers works really nicely because villagers will breed up to 12 with 32 doors. Um, that was a mistake. Um, uh, I, I was in incorrectly remembering the ratio or the rounding or something, uh, but villagers will actually only breed up to 11 with 32 doors. Uh, still, 11 is sufficient uh, for uh, this uh, spawning cell. You only need 10 villagers, actually. Uh, so 32 doors still works relatively well. Um, but the other thing with respect to 32 doors uh, as long as they are evenly spaced around the farm, uh, it pretty much guarantees where the center of the uh, uh, center of the cell is going to be. So, uh, the center of this village uh, is going to be basically in the middle of these four blocks here. Uh, and I, I had mentioned that um, I had thought that there was a problem with iron golems spawning outside the 16 by 16 area where they're allowed to spawn uh, due to a potential miscalculation uh, or a rounding error when computing the center of the village. Uh, now here I'm facing north and uh, the center of the village is going to be the basically the northwest corner of this block, so right there. Uh, but if there's a rounding error, uh, either it, the rounding error is going to be in favor of this block, it's going to be moved more towards the center of this block, uh, or, a, sorry, more or less, um, uh, it's not really a rounding error, basically a computational error uh, with respect to determining the center of the village. Um, if it enters this block a little bit more, it's going to get rounded down basically back to the northwest corner. So if it gets moved into this block, it's not really a big deal. 
Um, but if it gets moved over, say, just into the corner of the block to the southwest of that, uh, 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 or to the northwest of that block, uh, then what's going to happen is the village center is going to be rounded down to be this corner way over here. Uh, so I did some experimentation uh, and I was able to reproduce that rounding error, uh, but only with um, strange numbers of doors or really at the extreme edges of the map. Um, um, so in order to guarantee that you're going to, that the center of your village is going to be computed correctly, uh, evenly space the doors around the cell uh, and use 32 doors. Um, uh, 32 is a power of th uh, is a power of two. And as a consequence, the, um, uh, the division is always going to work out really nicely. It's easy. Uh, <laughs> it's easy on the computer. Uh, and so that will pretty much guarantee that the center of your village is always going to be uh, the northwest corner of this block here. Uh, and that will, uh, uh, that will guarantee the 16 by 16 area where golems can spawn isn't shifted by one block. Uh, so that, um, that's one thing with doors. Use 32 doors, make sure that they're evenly spaced around the cell. Uh, the other thing with respect to doors is uh, it has to actually do with my collection point. Um, so down here, um, uh, this is my uh, collection point. I have uh, sort of a, a poor man's uh, item filter here uh, where I've separated the iron and poppies that are going to be gathered uh, into this chest. Um, there are only two types of items that can make it into this chest, uh, iron ingots and poppies. Um, which means that anything else that falls into this hopper isn't going to be transferred to the chest. Uh, so if this hopper got filled up with junk items, uh, iron and poppies would no longer find their way into this chest because the, the hopper would effectively be blocked. Uh, so I want to make absolutely certain that nothing else uh, gets, uh, gets through my farm. Uh, and one of the ways in which to ensure that is to make sure that my doors are not uh, don't have the flush side to the outside of the farm. Uh, so I'm going to actually change all of these doors so that their flush side is on the inside of the cell here. Just like this. Uh, and that is going to ensure that if, uh, so these torches out here are ensuring that the light level down here is eight or above. Uh, however, lighting glitches do happen, and if any mobs spawn out here, uh, they are basically just going to, <laughs> well, they're going to go nowhere. They're, they're going to either drop down into oblivion, uh, or they're just going to uh, stay up here until they despawn. Uh, whereas, if the flush side of the doors is on the outside, and uh, any mobs spawn, uh, spawn in here, uh, creepers, skeletons, uh, regular zombies, they're all two blocks high. They're going to be stuck in here. They're not going to be able to move. Uh, but baby zombies uh, are able to get out of here. They're eventually going to jump into the water stream. They're going to find their way into the collection point where they're going to die, and their drops are going to end up in that hopper. Uh, so I want to make sure that uh, absolutely no mobs find their way into my collection point. Uh, and one of the ways in which to ensure that is to make sure the flush side of your doors is on the inside, not the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of those doors, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I've inverted all of the doors, uh, all 32 of them, uh, eight on each side. Uh, and uh, speaking of ensuring that no errant items uh, get into my hopper, uh, it's time to take a look at the water streams. Uh, so this is the classic water stream that pretty much you will see in all of the tutorial videos. Um, uh, this particular water stream is troublesome. Uh, first of all, from an aesthetic point of view, I really, I really just don't like it. Uh, but secondly, if you have too high flowing water and one of these cells uh, you build between layers uh, uh, 46 and 62, um, it will, uh, squid can spawn in here, and squid will eventually make it into the collection point, drop ink sac sacks, polluting the hopper. Uh, so I'm, uh, just as a matter of style and uh, completeness, I'm going to go ahead and change these water streams to be one high. 
Uh, and I can do that um, by using asymmetric water streams. You just grab a random block here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to get rid of the, the water in the corners up here. Well, I'll just do one corner. I'll do the rest later. Uh, now, this water in this corner was required because I don't have any water source blocks right here. Uh, and in order to make sure that water is all flowing towards the middle, I needed to have uh, I needed to have an extra water source block over here. Um, but if I placed it right here, these two other blocks would turn into source blocks, and that would uh, turn the whole mess into a big uh, uh, into a big mass of water source blocks, uh, which of course is not going to actually flow. So. Um, you'd place a water source block up here, but of course that creates uh, too high flowing, uh, too high flowing water. Uh, and there actually is a way to solve this. Uh, rather than have uh, your these three blocks be absent of water source blocks and place another one on top here, uh, I'm going to actually place a water source block in the corner, but I'm not going to have two water source blocks here. So let me just go ahead and grab a bucket. There we go. Um, now, this uh, water is still, but once I remove these two blocks, it's flowing. Uh, and there's a bit of an asymmetric flow here. You can see it's, uh, it's not even uh, like it is with the water source block high in the corner. Uh, but everything that gets dropped here is going to get pushed towards the center anyway. Um, it just uh, goes around a little bit of a curve if it, uh, if it comes over here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch... Uh, all of my uh, all of my water to be one high. I'm going to change all of those corners, uh, both on this layer and the layer down here, uh, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I have removed all of the too high water, changed the corner of all of my uh, uh, of the, uh, all the corners of water that I had, uh, both on the top and on the bottom here, uh, and that takes care of the water flow in the corners. Uh, now there is a problem with the water flow uh, around the middle here, and that has to do with the size of iron golems. Um, uh, iron golems uh, are 1.4 blocks wide, uh, so if you have two of them that meet in the middle here, they're being pushed evenly by the water on both sides, uh, and they are going to basically block each other, and neither one of them is going to drop down into the hole here. Now, you're going to have two iron golems if uh, you have lots of doors and lots of villagers here. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, only one iron golem can spawn in this cell at a time. Uh, but if you do like most people do and you stack these cells uh, and there's another cell 66 blocks higher, an iron golem can fall from up there and uh, uh, actually hit the water here rather than drop through the hole. Uh, and uh, if two golems ever actually do meet here, uh, they they can basically shut off the production of this cell. Uh, and that is because uh, they can effectively block each other here uh, indefinitely. Uh, and that goes uh, is the same for any kind of collection point that you have. So this is not only true for the cells themselves, but if you use other water streams to ship the golems elsewhere, uh, make sure that um, however you collect them, they can't block each other by uh, moving into a 2x2 two two opening. Uh, but what I'm, I'm going to take care of that here uh, by uh, just simply placing down a couple of slabs. Uh, now, uh, in uh, my previous video, I had talked about an alternative uh, design for an iron golem spawning cell where I was using the 1.9 mechanic of uh, trap doors, not having to be attached to a block. Uh, so you can just drop down trap doors pretty much anywhere now. You can have free-floating trap doors. Uh, and I was talking about how they can be used to, um, uh, to uh, kind of sew together water flows because iron golems are uh, more than one block wide. Uh, what happens is an iron golem that would get stuck uh, or that would hop up on top here uh, would be continued to be pushed by this water over here and uh, by the time it got on top it would get picked up by the water over here so uh, the um, uh, I had thought that at the tail end of water uh, they wouldn't the water wouldn't be able to push up high enough on the slabs but it's not actually true it doesn't really matter um, does it, uh, as long as it's a, a partially high block, it seems, um, so trapdoor slabs also work. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust the 
flow of water to the uh, uh, to the hole here by just a little bit on two adjacent sides uh, to give the other uh, to give the other two adjacent sides just that edge and priority over pushing golems in uh, to make sure that if two golems ever actually do reach the hole at the same time, uh, the water flow will be enough to kind of jostle them and give uh, and make sure that one falls through, uh, allowing the other one to fall through after. So I'm just going to pick two arbitrary sides um, here. I'm going to pick north and west, uh, and uh, for one of the side, uh, for both of the sides, I'm going to choose the uh, right block right at the edge here. I'm going to drop a slab, and I'm going to move over to and drop another slab. So that's one side, and I'm going to do the other side over here, right here, and then over to and another slab. And I'm just going to leave those slabs right there. Now, iron golems are not going to get stuck on top of these slabs, and that is because they are greater than one block wide. Uh, so no matter what, the water is always going to push them off. Even if it looks like the water flow is below the level of the slab, uh, the effect of pushing extends uh, uh, extends basically the full block high, so or I think 0.9 blocks high or something. Uh, so uh, and you can even feel it as the player. If I um, if I stand right in here, I'm less than one block wide, so I'm not being pushed. But if I move over. Uh, the water is still pushing me, even though, technically speaking right here, it looks like it's lower than the height of the slab. So uh, these blocks, uh, or these slabs here, are not going to allow golems to stand on them and stay there forever. They are still going to get pushed always into the hole. It's just that now uh, the water stream on these two sides over here is pushing just ever so slightly harder uh, and allowing golems uh, that would otherwise be blocked to get pushed through the hole. Uh, so I'm going to do that on uh, the top and on the bottom, just those four slabs, uh, and uh, that's basically it for uh, uh, for taking care of the water streams. Uh, now, as for lighting, uh, lighting glitches do happen, so I am not going to rely on these torches. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all of the torches on the outside. Uh, those torches were uh, were lighting uh, inside this door area here. They were lighting all the way up on top, all along the, all along the edge on top here. Uh, and uh, for the villager holding cell that used to be here, they were lighting the top edge of that. Um, but uh, I don't want to rely on torches uh, because lighting glitches do happen, uh, like I said. Instead, I'm going to slab the entire thing. Uh, all along the edge up here, uh, and that will take care of going. Uh, that will take care of uh, hostile mobs spawning up here. Now, iron golems spawn in a 16 by 16 by 6 high area, uh, which means uh, that they should be able to. Well, I'm going to leave these here. Uh, they should be able to spawn. Uh, uh, given where my doors are, they should be able to spawn three uh, three blocks below the doors and uh, below the base of the door, and three blocks above. So they should be able to spawn anywhere inside uh, these blocks. Uh, now I've never been able to determine for absolute certain that they cannot uh, spawn on the very top of this block. It's a little bit unclear from the descriptions I've read about iron golem spawning. Um, iron golems seem to spawn with fractional x and z coordinates, but integer y coordinates. And if they spawn in a 16 by 16 by 6 area, uh, down here you can consider to be 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So by that uh, description, it's a little bit ambiguous whether or not they could actually spawn on the surface of this block. Um, if they can spawn on the surf surface of that block, uh, then you would not want to remove this layer and just slab this layer here. Uh, and that's because, uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, as you're approaching this uh, cell, uh, if the center of the village is being computed only by these doors in front here, 
and if iron golems can actually spawn on top of this block, they can actually spawn on top of this block inside this slab. I've never seen that happen, uh, but again, because the description of iron golem spawning is a bit ambiguous, I'm not going to take any chances. I want these things to be bulletproof. Uh, they're a pain to set up, a pain to maintain, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave the extra layer up here uh, and I'm going to put in my slabs all around the edge here. Uh, as for lighting the, um, uh, the doors, I'm going to do that from the inside. So I'm going to put up some torches over here on the inside. Uh, basically, torches and glowstone is the only way. Uh, it's the only way to go for lighting the doors because they have to be on uh, on a top surface block. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put torches on either side of the doors here, just all the way around. Uh, and not only will that light all of the surface area on which the doors are mounted. Uh, but it's also going to light the space uh, where these uh, minecarts are holding the villagers. That's not actually so important uh, because hostile mobs shouldn't be able to spawn in the same space where uh, uh, where its uh, its hitbox would intersect with that of another entity. So uh, hostile mobs really shouldn't spawn down here. So they could be uh, these spaces could be completely dark. Um, but uh, it doesn't really matter. These torches are going to light these to, uh, uh, to a light level eight or greater anyway. So uh, I'll take care of um, uh, I'll take care of the doors uh, and the villagers with torches on the inside, and I will take care of the um, uh, take care of hostile mobs spawning on the outside by slabbing around the edge here. Okay, I've removed all of the remaining exterior torches and slabbed um, the entire edging of the uh, um, of the wall there. And the only thing that remains now to address is my collection point. Uh, this collection point is a nice little concise uh, two by two area. However, it is not low enough. Uh, just as a matter of minor optimization, uh, iron golems that come into this collection point uh, should be falling four blocks uh, from uh, the surface of this floor here in order to be considered out of this out of the village uh, right here uh, right now they're only falling one two three blocks uh, and I want them to fall four uh, that way as soon as they drop into the into the kill area here uh, uh, another golem can spawn immediately in this cell uh, that uh, that's really just kind of a minor point of optimization um, but uh, I'm gonna lower that by another block uh, the other problem with this particular collection area uh, is that uh, it's not large enough uh, this 2 by 2 area um, is really just uh, the right size for an iron golem uh, but the problem is that like villagers iron golems are really really glitchy uh, so what I want to make sure is that if there's ever more than one iron golem in here or if there's an iron golem uh, in here and the chunks are reloaded or whatever it's not going to glitch into the wall uh, and the first thing I'm going to need to do then uh, is um, is to widen this collection area uh, I want to make sure that it is wide enough that if more than one golem are uh, more than one golems in there uh, that they're not sort of bumping each other in uh, so that they clip into the wall. Uh, but I also want to make sure that the water that's in there that's uh, basically collecting the drops from the golems is pushing the golems into the middle of an area away from the wall in the same way that the water was pushing the villagers away from the wall uh, for those villager holding cells. Uh, so I'm going to build out a little bit of a larger collection area and um, I'll show that to you uh, when I'm done. Okay, I've increased the size of my little collection area here uh, where the iron golems drop into. Um, it is now at a 3x3 three three hole rather than a 2x2 two two hole, but it's got a larger 5x5 five five base on the bottom, and all of the walls are two blocks thick, uh, two solid opaque blocks. Um, that makes sure that any golems that do manage to clip into the wall here aren't going to be able to go uh, to kind of continue in. And that's because I'm going to put water down in this 5x5 five five area, uh, pushing them back into the middle. Uh, first, I want to take care of um, this little hopper here. Uh, 
Now, the water that's coming in here, uh, I don't want it to, to actually pour down uh, into this hole. Uh, maybe this hopper is uh, uh, more than one block down, several blocks down. Uh, but I don't want the water that I'm going to place in the corners here, I don't want that to actually flow into the, uh, into the hole because that's going to create uh, too high water again. I generally try to avoid that. Uh, let me get rid of this water here for a second. So um, one of the things that uh, uh, people do uh, above their hoppers, for example, is they're going to put a sign. Um, don't use a sign. On, on any of your collection hoppers, um, always put a slab. Uh, and uh, the hopper can pick up items uh, through the slab, and the slab prevents mob spawning. Uh, a sign here, uh, it turns out that the surface of hoppers is a hostile mob spawnable surface, so uh, hostile mobs can actually spawn here, and even if there was water on top, um, baby zombies uh, could actually spawn there. Um, and so, um, again, because I'm trying to uh, avoid anything other than iron and poppy going to that hopper, I'm, I'm uh, pretty, uh, pretty cautious about it. So uh, I'm going to place a slab on top of that hopper uh, rather, than, uh, rather than a sign. Uh, but I do want a sign right in the middle of this here. Uh, so I'm going to place a sign right on top of that slab. Uh, and now when I uh, add my water in, Uh, you'll see it doesn't actually uh, touch inside the hole here. Uh, and I placed the sign there because I'm going to put a lava source block on top there. Uh, now placing a lava source block on top of the sign uh, is a bit tricky uh, to do in survival mode. Um, one of the ways in which you can do it is place it, uh, place it against this block. Like that. Um, you can also place it uh, against the bottom of this block here, although that's, uh, that is a little bit dangerous to do, um, still it's, it's possible. Uh, but placing the lava, uh, lava there, and then uh, you can uh, break this block and quickly put a, a sign before the lava flows. Uh, and I've got a nice standing lava source block. Uh, now, the reason why I want the lava at this level uh, is because Iron golems, um, <laughs> there's one now, uh, iron golems, like I mentioned, are glitchy. They not only glitch through walls, but they can glitch through the floor as well. Uh, just like chickens, they have a problem with chickens glitching through the, through the floor. Um, iron golems can glitch through the floor as well. Uh, and if, um, if they are standing on a block underneath these blocks here, um, uh, and this lava is one higher, they're not actually going to get killed by the lava that's up here because um, their head is going to be where that lava, uh, lava block is. So I, I want the lava to be right there, uh, at least one lava source block of it. Uh, and I'm going to put another lava source block in here, uh, and uh, that is going to be against this block here. So I just placed that lava, and that lava is going to flow to cover the whole area here. Uh, but because I placed these signs down here, maybe we can get a look at it, um, get away here. Uh, because I placed these signs all around, um, the, um, uh, this lava is not going to actually flow down into this water. So uh, this uh, collection point has uh, served me pretty well with respect to uh, stability. I don't have uh, iron golems uh, glitching out of this collection point. Uh, and it doesn't seem, despite the amount of lava in there, it doesn't actually seem to destroy any drops. So uh, that is basically it. Um, I've uh, attempted to kind of glitch free this, uh, uh, this um, iron golem spawning cell. Uh, like I said, I really want these things to be bulletproof because uh, they're, they're a pain to put up, they're a pain to maintain. Uh, and you're really not going to, uh, probably not going to go up and check on these things unless you see a really noticeable loss in production. Uh, so I, I want to make sure that I, I can put these things up and then basically just forget about them. Uh, and this takes care of all of the problems that I had with this. 
uh, with the exception of one minor uh, minor issue is, the, is that this uh, hole here represents a loss of uh, about 1.5% of the uh, spawnable surface location for iron golems. But um, again, that's not really too much of a big deal. And for some of the other designs that I worked on, um, the trade-offs uh, for, uh, for taking care of that issue were much, much higher. So uh, that's uh, going to be it then for this video. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments, and thank you very much for watching.